Okay, everybody, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife, and welcome back to another species highlight. Now, today, we're going to be talking about fish. More specifically, chondrichthys, or cartilaginous fish. We are going to be exploring rays. Uh, now, a lot of people don't realize, but rays are close, close, close cousins to sharks. So they share a ton of similarities, including being in that group, chondrichthys, that means cartilaginous fish. Now, cartilage is the same stuff that's in our ears, our nose. Um, it's a somewhat hard but flexible substance uh, that we see appear in a lot of the animal kingdom, um, as opposed to bony fish like salmon or bass or things of that nature. Um, cartilaginous fish have a very simplistic bony skeleton. Uh, oftentimes, really, the only bones that we get to see of them are in their teeth um, and their vertebrae. Uh, most of the sharks and the rays support system is cartilage. Uh, so we're going to learn a bit about rays. So let's take a look. Many ray species like this one here spend most of their time on the seabed, kind of skirting around and looking for crustaceans to feed on. Now, a lot of people, um, if you've interacted with any rays, maybe you've gone to an aquarium where they've let you, you know, feed them, uh, etc. Um, they think that they just have these little plates. Well, these plates are actually made up of many, many tiny teeth. A lot of people think that rays and skates and those types of things are toothless. Um, but in fact, uh, those bony plates are actually made up of teeth. So what they use those for is crushing up uh, fish, uh, crustaceans primarily is what most of those rays and skates are feeding on. And so they're able to kind of create a little suction bowl with their bodies. So their bodies are typically round, like we see in the um, Atlantic stingrays and species like that. And they will trap their prey underneath them and kind of maneuver themselves and the prey will, will be moved up to their mouth. The mouth is on the underside of the body and they'll suck that in and crush it up with those plates, swallow it, and digest it. Now many stingrays spend a lot of their time burrowed in the sand with just their eyes visible, so they have a really cool adaptation. Now although their gills and their mouth are on the underside of their body, right behind the, their eyes, they have this special adaptation called a spiracle. And this is a special adaptation to help certain species breathe while they are in camouflage mode underneath the sand. So you can see that, that little spiracle opening and closing that is allowing the ray to breathe underwater. Now many rays are equipped with a barb or a sting. Now oftentimes these stings are coated in potent toxic mucus. Uh, which can agitate any sort of predator that it's defending itself against. Now, these barbs are super dangerous, um, and they are removable. They're built to be removable. A lot of people think that, that stingrays are just kind of armed with this knife, uh, that they can just stab and stab and stab, but that actually regrows and is shed oftentimes when it's used. So it'll whip up and stab that predator, and the barb oftentimes will become lodged and stuck in that larger life form or whatever the stingray is defending itself against. And then, of course, those barbs hold that giant sting or barb into that uh, wound. And then the mucus can cause irritation. It can cause swelling. And it is not a good time. Now, here's a better look at that beautiful adaptation, the spiracles in play. So you can see this ray is completely submerged in the sand, but is still able to breathe properly with the use of that amazing body part. So take a look at that eye, just keeping an eye on the camera, while it is able to breathe while completely submerged in granular sand. So cool. Other species of rays, uh, like cow nose rays or manta rays, uh, are free swimming. Not quite uh, the same at the bottom, you know, ocean floor species like we see with the Atlantic stingrays and other species like that. Um, th these species uh, flap 
almost seemingly fly underwater. Uh, many species like manta rays are, are plankton feeders. So they have those big flaps on the front of their mouths to help guide those smaller particles and, and, and particulate and tiny food into their mouths to filter feed. Other species like cow nose rays have modified um, front appendages towards the mouth that help them suction down uh, food up into their mouths. So really, really cool adaptations, super variable um, in the ray world. Now here are some cow nose rays. So you can take a look at some of those really interesting adaptations. So see, these are free swimming, but you can see they've got those spiracles again behind the eyes. Now let's see if we can catch some of that wacky mouth action. So they are just swimming around, searching for food. As you can see, uh, their, their wings, their fins, kind of come into a point, as opposed to more of a disc shape, like the Atlantic stingrays that we were looking at earlier. Take a look at that, coming up right close to us. Really, really pretty. Wow, wow, wow. Now, just like sharks, rays are um, coated in kind of a sandpapery skin. It's real smooth if you rub it one way. However, if you rub it kind of against the grain, it is pretty abrasive. So let's take a look. Oh, oh, I got one coming up right to me. <laughs> Once again, you can see that spiracle kind of opening and closing, allowing water in so that they can oxygenate their blood. But aren't they spectacular to look at? So peaceful just watching these beautiful fish seemingly swim through the water column. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Those long tails, a little murky water, but it doesn't seem to bother them. They're just on the hunt for food. <laughs> So you see when they're kind of sitting, kind of flopping on the ground, they're using that modified mouth again to suction and find food for them to eat. Real good shot of that one's face. Really, really cool. Take a look at that. Now we've got another one coming into screen here. There she is. Very, very nice right up to me. <laughs> I'm not food, I'm not shrimp. Look at that, there you see that modified mouth kind of extending down, kind of hard to see. But they get that name cow nose ray from that kind of broad snout. Um, and as they seemingly graze along, uh, they, they can appear cow-like, I guess, to some. Here's another one flying over to us. Beautiful animals, such beautiful animals, very ancient animals as well. There's some more of that mouth action. Take a look at that. Look how bizarre that is. Just kind of an extension mouth, kind of trying to hunt for food. Very cool. Well, I hope you guys learned a lot this episode. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also turn on notifications so that you don't miss any more of these interesting episodes. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more content this next year. I'm hoping to get a ton of stuff done, a lot of collaborations. I've got a lot of cool stuff planned, so you don't want to miss anything. So remember to just keep up with the videos, keep on watching, and I really appreciate your support. So I'll see you next time.